Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the American Mind Grind, a controversial show that covers topics of all size, shape, and color. Please be advised, this show will make your brain hurt. If you have a faint heart or weak liver, it is suggested that you consult your physician before participating. Others may consider a glass of water and two Advil to lower your blood pressure. You will have to think. Your mind will get addicted to our program. We bring it to you straight and do not duck any of the issues. Although it may hurt, this show is good for you. We must be aware of our surroundings and understand what is happening in this crazy world we live in. Remember, the comments of the show are that of opinion only. We are not professionals. We will not be held responsible for any of the stupid things you may or may not do after listening to our show. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the American Mind Grind. How are you guys? What's going on? Good. You know, um, this show's going to be a special show. And uh, I've been thinking since we got to the studio night, we got together in the conference room there, guys, is like, I'm trying to figure out what we're missing. It's either something or someone. And um, quite frankly, man, I'm, I'm here, I'm on the show, and I still don't know what the hell we're missing. So I guess it wasn't that memorable to begin with. Well, it's probably because it's been replaced... Yeah, that's right. It's been permanently replaced, probably. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what we're missing, but I forgot he was even here. Uh, moving forward, uh, we, this is a special show, and the reason why is because for the last 10 weeks we've been on Vegas All Night Radio. We've never had co-hosts, guests, or anything like that. So tonight we actually have our first co-host of the American Mind Grind, and I'd like to welcome them and, and, and introduce them to you. Uh, sitting on the uh, two seats away from me, that's Russ O., Russ O is sitting in with us. How was your week, Russ? Uh, it's okay. It's kind of boring, you know. Um, just working. We're going with Crescent. So doing what I do. Tell me about Crescent. What's Crescent all about? Uh, Crescent School Gaming and Bartending. We're a school locally here in town. We teach people how to take people's money and get them drunk. So, but yeah, we teach casino dealers. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty man, good uh, it's, industry it's good for Las yeah. Vegas. Uh, I do that professionally myself. Uh, <laughs> as I get people wasted, I encourage them to act in completely irresponsible, lose every dollar that they have on them, and uh, probably make some pretty poor ass decisions to boot. You probably pay too much to get that trading, though, huh? Uh, yeah, actually. I attended the University of Nevada Las Vegas Hotel Administration School, which at the time was the very best uh, school in the entire country for it. In fact, uh, Cornell University, which is an Ivy League school, was ranked number two in U.S. News and World Report. And I work at uh, a little place here in town, and I bartend, and my mom's real proud of me, and she's seen all of her thirty or $40,000 that she put into my education uh, being put to work. You know, I've hit the pinnacle of my success. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a librations administrator. Well, you know, some call it an adult beverage coordinator or a uh, spirits concierge. I like that one. You know, it's kind of soft and nice, you know. Kind of makes me feel like I did something with my education. So anyway, uh, well. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And yeah. oh, by the way, on a side note, um, Russ has done some really fantastic work for AMG, American Mind Grind. He, has, uh, he was the one that designed the logo, which many of you have seen, all the artwork. Uh, he's done banners for us, uh, business cards for us. He's very talented with the computer. It's probably because he's a lot younger than me. I can't do anything, you know, on that uh, shit. I'm just not. Oh, yeah, I think you're pretty goddamn good at it, bro. Thank you. Yeah, thank I don't want anyone to mess with you at the bar, too. Uh, I don't like when they do that, get you drunk or any of that shit. You know, I, I need you sharp. No, I enjoy getting drunk. Yeah, like I, work drunk. I work better when I'm like this pee -pee yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My best work is when I'm shit faced at the bar. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, and then I have to welcome a very special guest here tonight and co host of the American Mind Grind is my very best buddy, Chase. Chase, who I call the executor because. The, he's the executor of my will. He's one of my very best friends. Uh, How much is it worth to off Eric? Yeah, no, got not some a lot. Money, maybe, oh, may, maybe a little bit more for his son than anybody else. But <laughs> that'd probably be about it. I don't hurt children. I'm and out. The reason why I mention this, gentlemen, is that yeah, he's the executor of my will, and I will say this publicly. If something happens mysteriously to me, 
Uh, Chase is going to make it right. We used, we used to get together on this. We've got a game plan in place. So if anyone messes with me, Sony Music Entertainment or the Kardashians <laughs> or anyone offs me, and I wind up in the desert somewhere, Chase is going to make things right. We'll do, we'll do a full investigation on it. Yeah, three barrels of milk, <laughs> Estrada is what we're going <laughs> to do on right. it. Yep, you take them by horseback and make them <laughs> bury me, dude. You do it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's the executor of the will and uh, all that stuff. And uh, how was your week, Chase? What did you do this week? Well, never a dull moment with uh, most of my time. Mm -hmm. uh, just got back in town from the Lake of the Ozarks, which was a very pleasant vacation where my phone didn't work at all. You went with a couple of our buddies. Who would you go with? I went with uh, Mr. Nick Mayhew and Mayhew Mike, and Mike Aronson. Very nice. Did you have a good time? We had a great time. Mike uh, was a great host at his house out there, and we we had a great time. It was other than the fact he slept all Sunday. Fucking well, bastard. Uh, I get a little restless sometimes. It's a day of the rest, man. What do you mean? Day of rest. It's Sabbath. God damn, you're on vacation. You can rest well, when you get home. Some people drink a little bit more than others. So. Yeah. <laughs> some have better tolerance than others, too, brother. That's fair enough there. <laughs> so tell me more. So you got back into town just well, recently. I know that. Uh, I got back in town. Uh, my phone started working again, and uh, there's an unfortunate message there. As far as that, my mother had hired a, a crackhead, basically, to do a block wall for her. And when I came back in town and found out what was going on, I... I'd planned on firing the guy the very next day, but unfortunate for my dinner that I had went to, I'd gotten the phone call to find out the guy was in her backyard around nine o'clock at night, and I advised her to go ahead and call the police, and I told her I'd be there as soon as I could, got my food to go, passed a couple of the officers that ended up showing up at the scene <laughs> after I got there. I passed them on the way there. I only lived down the road from her, so I actually, knowing that the cops were heading there, I had went by my own house and dropped off my weapon before I had gotten there, and I had seen the helicopter flying around, but by the time I'd gotten there, uh, I, the guy was parked in her driveway. I guess they thought that she was at work. I blocked him in the driveway, met him about halfway into the yard where he had met me. They were in the backyard smoking speed, Yeah, and uh, confronted the guy immediately and asked him who the fuck he was, and yep. he was probably pretty scared at that moment mm -hmm. the helicopter had the spotlight on me and him so of course i didn't put my hands on him being that it was probably being recorded but right uh i told him that, you know he wasn't doing the job properly to begin with uh, i told him to get his shit and get the fuck out of there right and um <laughs> uh, pretty aggressively my adrenaline was pumping pretty good like i said the helicopter had the spotlight on me the whole time the cops still weren't there and it probably took me about 15 minutes to get there you know by the time i got my food packed up and, and where'd you go to dinner uh, olive garden olive garden so you, your your dinner's ruined you got you well, and you know you're, unfortunate you're upset. because i just got my food served to me pack and, it up and then i gotta of course go i got the phone call and i was like All how right. many hours from the time that you uh landed to the time uh, you're dealing with this catastrophic thing probably around two and a half to three hours by the time Louise. i got in town so okay, dudes. Okay, the dudes. Uh, uh, he's not a licensed contractor. We all know that. Clearly not. Yeah. And he wasn't doing the job right. There was no footing for the block wall. He had basically hazard playing around. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, smoking dope in my mother's backyard. I found a a five gallon bucket that he had been shitting in her backyard in, <laughs> which was pretty inappropriate <laughs> for anybody that you hired to work for you. So your first contact with him, were you angry? Did you feel like maybe to beat the ever living crap out of him? I, uh, told him a few things uh, and uh by your behavior did he kind of feel that energy toward him he felt that energy and he wanted to get out of there as soon as possible <laughs> but his then car I was told locked him in to get his shit and get the <laughs> fuck out of here he was happy to get his shit and then once we get out in the front yard i realized shit i got him blocked in and the cops are here or coming and by the and i told him you know what You're, nobody's going nowhere until you're getting no trespass and yeah. him and the girl that he is with because the way I see it, I mean, you know, you're not coming back. The chick, the chick thought it was his house, right? The chick, uh, the lady that was with him said, "Oh, he told me this is his house. I, I don't know anything. I don't know." No but fortunately, she cooperated with the police and admitted to smoking dope in my mother's backyard. Well, that's a the guy. Uh, you know, he, uh, he, you know, there was no physical confrontation. Of course, I, I was screaming and hollering. Probably woke up most of the neighborhood if they were asleep. People were coming out of their houses, but. When it came right down to it, I mean, he ended up going to jail. The vehicle that he had parked in her driveway was a stolen vehicle. Right. So, I mean, he went to jail for a felony charge right there up right. on top of, you know. 
Yes. Wow. Uh, I, I let him know real quick that I was back in town. Yeah. So I wasn't going to take advantage of my old mom. And now you ruined your goddamn meal. Well, that made you angry. I'm guessing she didn't find him on Angie's list. Well, that's a no. pretty, going out on a limb. Here. That's a pretty sensational story, and <laughs> I appreciate you sharing boy, that boy, with boy. us. Yeah. Wow. Uh, when he gets out of jail, I'm kind of looking for a day laborer. Uh, give me his number, okay? <laughs> All you have to do is I got some work for him. You got to get a five-gallon bucket so well, you can no, shit I got, I, got the do- I got the bird to pigeon crap on the roof, you know. I was thinking maybe for like 10 bucks <laughs> cash an hour, he'd go up there. Dude, just know? get him a little rock. It'll be cheaper. That's true. Yeah, we get done quick. Yeah, but uh, me securing that 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 crystal methamphetamine is probably not too good for my freedom. <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, that's true. I don't really have too many friends that dope uh, deal, but uh, you know who knows. Matt, how was your week, bro? You know what? It was a pretty decent week. I'm no longer living like a vagrant. I got fresh cooked meals, a clean house. Uh, you know, had laundry. We, what I'm we back do? on my meds. So really, yeah, yeah. So was, and the wife's back in town, so it'll probably be a pretty pretty nice break for my liver. Ah, I see. So, so. We, can, we can attribute Matthew's uh, Matthew's new voyage uh, because of the uh, the appearance of his wife. She's got him all straightened out. Just the good behavior when she's around, I guess. <laughs> well, and also the administrator of your meds. <laughs> True, yeah. Yeah, blood pressure's back to normal, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, Sarah, welcome home. I know you went through a really tough time with your family. And for that, you, uh, you know, you have my thoughts and all that stuff. And I'm just glad you're home and you're safe and you made it back and forth. And um, hopefully there will be better times ahead of you. Uh, How was your week, Eric? My week was uh, very, very interesting, guys. Um, I, I think we're going to take them a couple minutes here. The American Mind Grind, okay, has been on the radio now uh, and the internet and on YouTube for the last, this is our 10th week, okay? So we've been on YouTube for nine weeks, and I'm very proud to say that we've, uh, we've had 2,750 views on YouTube, which is really, now, for those of you who don't know, um, that's a pretty extraordinary thing. You know, for a ground roots uh, new show to just come on the scene and, and, and to be received by the people. So for that, I would like to thank everyone who, uh, who contributes to our show. People like Russ and uh, people who watch the show. People who share their stories and stories that they think will be really good on our show. We really appreciate that. And with that said, our fifth show, uh, Viva Las Vegas, was actually taken off the internet. Uh, temporarily uh, because there was a copyright infringement with Sony Music Entertainment. It was just a real big fat mess, you know what I mean? And um, our, our ninth show, last week's show, we, don't, we still don't know exactly what happened. The video footage of that show is gone. Uh, we don't know if somebody hacked into uh, the system, stole, pirated, took away. But for whatever reason, our, our video footage of that show is gone. Now, the audio file, luckily, was, was not harmed in any way. And we've got it on YouTube. And we, you, you all have our apologies for that. We really still to this moment don't know if Sony Music Entertainment was behind it, some other. I think it was the Kardashians. Could have been the Kardashians. Uh, Chloe, Chloe's pissed that you know I did. I did say that Lamar was dead prematurely, and uh, uh, for that I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Turns out he made it. You know he did. Yeah, he's still alive, so that's a good thing. Sorry, Chloe. If they, if you're behind this, could you please give us back our file? <laughs> what, what, what? It's too late. She hit it in Kim's so ass. It's on YouTube. Uh, the audio files on YouTube, and what we did was we did all the video transitions that we normally do on the green screen for you. We're not in the studio with the with our video uh, and and our audio, but if please please listen to it. It was such a great show, wasn't that a good show? I thought it was the best one we've done so far. Yeah, man, we talked about some really funny stuff and all that stuff. So let's get into some of the stuff that we're doing here tonight, gentlemen. Uh, tonight we're going to start off with um, we're going to have an open discussion about something that's really important. Uh, a lot of people out there since the Oregon shooting, and we've had mass murder shootings virginia tech and columbine and colorado and you know bombings in boston and just this is just the 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 pulse of our lives these days and that's sad enough but a lot of people are saying like they should have more people out there that have concealed firearm permits and this and that well we have a story to share with you uh detroit area okay you guys can fill in when you want um the detroit area Home Depot. And what happened there was a 46-year-old woman named Tatiana Duva Rodriguez. Um, she was shopping at the Home Depot there. Two men uh, put a cart together of merchandise, Home Depot merchandise. 
headed for the door. Loss prevention is uh, the loss prevention department's chasing after them. They hightail it out. They've got a a, a full size SUV ready to go. It was coordinated and everything. They start loading up their stuff. They're free and clear. Loss prevention says, you know what? That you know, I'm told not to get involved directly. There, there is only so much that they're really allowed to do by law. I don't think they're even allowed to chase you into the parking lot, are they? Uh, they yeah. could probably chase you out there, but I'm not sure if they're allowed to detain you. I mean, it's almost like a security guard. I mean, they're really there to call the cops for somebody. You know, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, they're not allowed to really get involved. Their work think, has fifty cents on it. To hurt, call it, it the maybe, because if they end up grabbing somebody and slamming them on the ground and hurting somebody i mean they're going to end up with a lawsuit they'll, they'll end up losing their job home depot will get a lawsuit i mean uh-huh absolutely you better believe but it this lady who's basically an innocent bystander decides to take a dip on herself to to unload her nine millimeter in uh, the middle of a street at a moving vehicle that's hightailing it out. Now, we all know, now, two of us have uh, concealed firearm permits, Chase and I, and we take that uh, responsibility very, very seriously. We go out and practice all the time. We're proficient in our weapons. We understand what, what, what type of responsibility is. And the number one rule, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you have to be under imminent danger or, or fear of life, and if you're female, fear of being raped to go ahead and unload on someone who is clearly a, an immediate danger to your to your life. I mean, I would say anytime you were to pull out your weapon, I mean, it's got to be justifiable. Exactly. I mean, even brandishing a weapon is, you know, you, you could be charged with that. Yeah, just like it being like, I mean, hey, I got this. You exactly. want to sell this right you now? You don't show your weapon to nobody. And that right there is the whole point of concealing a weapon. That's right. I don't want anyone to know that I've got a weapon on me. Exactly. I mean, if they want to try something, they'll probably find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> being that I'm pretty proficient. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've usually got 11 on me, and I'll probably hit you 11 out of 11 times. If it's close proximity, I am here to attest to that. Chase, if it's close, like uh, 20 foot something or in, he's going to dot your goddamn eye every time. It's well, simple you, as that. You, you've seen some 80-yard shots with my pistol. That's why I'm saying. If it was like a point-blank situation, I don't care how you know how the adrenaline pumps through him. Needless to say, put a, a guy down. A moving target is a lot harder to hit most of the time. I mean, uh, yeah. a, a target that's just sitting out there standing still, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Man, a little bit easy. <laughs> In this lady's defense, though, she did shoot out a tire. No, and she, you know what? Kudos to her. You know, other than the fact that you know <laughs> some of the rounds could have some of the rounds ricocheted and hit somebody completely not involved with this, and then she would have had to been like, "Well, I was trying to protect a trillion dollar company, Home Depot, out of losing a thousand dollars of merchandise." And they probably, I'm going to go out and uh, say this on a limb, they probably have some sort of policy against theft. Well, they could Home probably Depot. write it off pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah I'm that's thinking that maybe so. So. This the, the point of the story is, is we're bringing it to you because we want you to think. Now, everyone wants a CFP, okay? I got my license and I've got a weapon. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't do it. You know what I mean? You got to go. Uh, Chase and I agree. 200 rounds I, a month I would for say practice. It, you, you should, if you're going to carry a weapon on you, you should at least shoot 200 rounds a month just to be proficient with it. Because, I mean, if you're going to carry a gun on you all the time, you ever plan on using it, I mean... Needless to say, they say that you, you know, your adrenaline's pumping. You're probably not going to hit where you're aiming all the time yep. when you're in a situation like that. But if you shoot around uh, 200 rounds plus a month out of that weapon that you carry, I would say that you've got a lot better chance at being efficient with your weapon. I would even go in to say, bro, that if you have a weapon and you don't use it and practice with it, it will do you more harm than good. Absolutely. It because will. if you're not real proficient in using it, it will backfire on you every time. And also, if you if you take it out, you better be prepared to use it. There's no reason to take it out unless you're under siege and you feel like your life is being threatened and that you are committed 100 percent on using that weapon because there's no turning back. You can't go call time out. You know, if things don't go right for you, you've got to make sure that you're in a safe distance and that you know exactly what you're doing. Hasn't. Uh, the concealed weapons license uh, people have been going out and getting them like crazy lately oh absolutely uh, and I'm gonna I'm a touch on that uh, just so you guys know we'll backtrack just a little bit Tatiana Duva Rodriguez the woman that's uh, the one that Clint Eastwood everyone and went outside like the okay <laughs> goddamn corral Billy and started popping off rounds bitches. in the middle of nowhere like, just like, hoping to hit something like she was but the one who's getting I gotta robbed say, herself hey man to her defense she did knock out a tire 
So she's pretty, probably pretty good with the pistol, but you might not want to shoot at moving cars going away from Home Depot. She is facing actually charges, guys. Well, I imagine even hitting a tire, a lot of times it might not even blow out the tire. It'll end up flinging that bullet off in another direction. And I've been hit with a ricochet when Chase and I go out to uh, out to slow in the practice, and he's been hit with a ricochet I've of a 40. Hit with a few. And it hurts, man. It hurts yeah. a lot. And needless to say, if it hits in the right spot, it could have done more damage. She is facing 90 days, 90 days in jail and a $500 fine. That's the maximum she can get now she had killed somebody who knows what the protocol would have been for a crime like that that sounds pretty fair 90 days in jail and 500 dollar fine i think she'll, I mean, she'll wiggle out of all of it well i imagine that she's got to feel pretty lucky that that's the worst that she can get charged with considering um if things would have went in a different direction and she might have hit some an innocent bystander i mean you know what uh law enforcement said on the scene they said if she really wanted to help us the only thing she should have done is whip out her cell phone and get the driver's license plate off of the car would have helped them track that those people down and bring them to justice so if you want to be really helpful try to get that information guys you're ever in a situation like that grab the license plate number and share it with law enforcement it will make their jobs easier and keep the streets clean and all that stuff and safe yeah so what you're saying is don't pull out your nine just snitch <laughs> i mean this is detroit i mean what how good are the cops in Detroit? I mean, she's probably doing better. I didn't even know they had Home Depots in Detroit. I thought they were just plowing down buildings there. Yeah, the Auburn Hills Police Department I mean, were the people on the scene she, here. She shot a gun. No one died. That's what I'm still shocked about. They have Home Depot in Detroit? Do they even have yeah. homes left there? What kind of home improvement stories? <laughs> 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 so, uh, g- giving you guys some statistics here, uh, people out there. 4.6 million people in 2007, right before Obama took administration, uh, it had CFPs or concealed firearm permits. And now, currently, that number is swelled to 12.8 million people have it. And they've seen a female spike since 2007 of 270% of applicants. Men are up 156%. So this is a huge thing. In fact, in the last year, from 2014 to July, of two, July 16th of 2015, they had an increase in one year of 15.4%. And uh, currently, 5.4% of adults have a concealed firearm permit. So one in 20 have one, you know? That sounds pretty good. I yeah. mean, I, yeah. I, I think everybody should carry a gun as far as that goes. I mean, I'm definitely pro-gun. I 100% agree with you. But yes. at the same yes. time, if you're going to carry a gun, you should know how to use it. You should be yeah. proficient with it. You, yep. should, you should practice shooting it if you're going to plan on carrying that brings it. Up, that brings up a wonderful thing. One of our very closest friends, uh, Sonny Moreno, works over at the gun store. Now, if you're out there and you want to learn about guns and you want to protect your family, and that is your right to do, and that's one of the greatest rights that we have as United States citizens, you, the only thing you have to do is pony up, say, 50 bucks. Go down to gun store, ask for Sonny. He's in retail right now, I'll put you in the right hands. They, you tell them, hey, look, I've never shot a gun before. I have no idea. I just know that I'm interested in maybe getting, getting good with one. And he will put you in, in, the right, in the right hands. They will walk you through it. They will train you. You will take your time. You will get some experience under your belt. And then if you feel comfortable, you can take the class there at no cost to you. They only charge for the ammunition itself. Okay, that's it. It might cost you twenty five or thirty dollars to qualify. Then you take your uh, your certificate of completion. It's a whole day deal. Bring it over to the Metropolitan Police Department where they finger where they fingerprint you, and then it's ninety six dollars and fifty cents for a five year permit. You go through your federal background check, and yep. you got to requalify that. after five years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to requalify. But the, on the requalification, it is a shorter class. Yeah, that's right. Chase right. actually did his research already. Yeah. I'm in my first term uh, with my CFP, and when I'm coming up in two years, I got to go sit through it again. But it's a shorter version of it. Right. You have to, and also the money. It's ninety, not ninety six fifty. Was it sixty bucks? I don't even recall. It was I mean, less. It's under a hundred dollars. I mean, oh, yeah, all day long. Reasonable money yeah. well spent. And obviously, if you're going to renew, you normally want to renew before it expires. Usually, you try to renew a couple months early because it takes a while for for you to get it right. So that's so that's that. You know, what's your guys' thoughts on this? Do you think that this is the solution to some of these things that are happening? Maybe if people were better at it and they had the weapons on the scene of some of these crimes, maybe we wouldn't be talking about so many casualties. Maybe we would. So that's that's the debate, and that's what we want you to think about moving forward. And again, if you're interested in getting involved with having a firearm, just call Sonny over at uh, the gun store. It's on East Tropicana. It's a world famous place, and uh, go ahead and get involved with that community and they'll take good care of you the call-in number here at the studio in studio 1a is 702 
483 Four 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 four, and I think it's time to go into our next story, gentlemen. What do you think? Absolutely, you mentioned it in the intro about how uh, Lamar's still kicking it. So <laughs> Lamar Odom, wow. So we covered this story last week, fresh off the press, right? Right. R- right when he went unconscious, and I prematurely called him dead. Sorry, Sonny, I called him dead, man. I just thought he was going out when your heart goes and your lungs go and stuff. I just, go, I guess, I jumped the gun. A I was gonna bit. say, yeah, go without oxygen for any amount of time. Uh, what kind of brain function are you really gonna have? You know, and what is his condition? What what is his actual condition? That's what I was going to say. I yeah. mean, is he is he functional? Is is, is he going to be able to walk again? I mean, I know he's going to go. He's been transferred to a rehab in L.A. Yeah, yeah, he sure has. It's going to it save their marriage. He looks really <laughs> fucked up in the pictures, dude. I mean, they got <laughs> things hooked up to him in every such way. You know, I mean, he doesn't look so healthy. I'll tell you right now, he's not he's not ready to go back for back to the NBA for a comeback or anything well, like that. Anytime I don't soon. think that was ever going to happen. Well, no, he was actually working on it. Yeah, he was working on it with, at, at, with, at with the hookers. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. getting his cardio with those girls. Dropping right. it in the hole. And then dropping yeah, it in the hole. In the right, hole. okay. Right, and then... Practice. Stand which, up. by the way, was a really cool party, dude. 75 grand, dude. I'd love to be Lamar's friend, dude. Dude, I, fuck. hey, I could stay quiet for $75,000. Dude, and you know what? I You know, I, I, I keep everything in check and try to keep my vitals right. You know what I mean? And when he passed out drunk or whatever, I'd, I'd ask Dennis Hoff. I'd be like, do we have a balance, like, on the account? Because I'd like to stay for a couple more days. <laughs> I pace myself. I'm slow and, yeah. you know, slow. So instead, he like wins the race, you know what I mean? I guess Lamar just, uh, he couldn't stand, uh, he couldn't bear the strain of it. I'm still it's holding out the party with it. Charlie What'd Sheen. What'd you say, bro? I still hold out the party with Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Charlie says it's just a Tuesday night for him with what Lamar was doing. You know? Well, he, he doesn't pay for hookers. He pays them to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like That's why I pay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It got a little testy, though, with Dennis Hoff and the Kardashians over the week, if you were following it. You know, yeah, they totally. Uh, to each other. Or yeah. Like that. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a lot of scrutiny with uh, his, his license now, guys. We don't know what's going to happen moving forward. Hey, look... Uh, I'm going to break down some knowledge for you guys. You guys are going to be impressed with my uh, education. When I went to UNLV Hotel School, I actually retained some information. Not much, but I did retain some. And as hospitality law goes, he is an innkeeper, period. Uh, No matter what the nature of the business is, he has people in his facility. And at that point, you inherit the, the responsibility of keeping them safe. And he says he didn't know about the drug usage but a lot of his staff came out and said that it was very clear that he was using drugs and he has a responsibility to safeguard that establishment and safeguard the people within that establishment so there is some liability technically speaking in regards to like hospitality law all right in the same aspect though i mean lamar odom was paying for a certain certain privacy you know what i mean it's discretion. not like discretion exactly yeah, so cr- crack where do cocaine you draw that line? And, and hookers it's and not like hoff got him the cocaine right well I'm pretty sure he came packing yeah okay well no i'm sure he brought his party favors and stuff exactly. like that you know what i mean how that conversation went. he's like hey i'm gonna do a bunch of coke and stuff and this is like well if you end up dead, I'm just going to tell everyone what you did. So <laughs> <laughs> probably, Just don't tell Chloe. Yeah, just, just don't tell her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they were estranged. and uh, But it, it, a shocking revelation, guys. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Today, TMZ announced uh, this morning that they've rescinded the paperwork for their divorce and that they are determined to stay together and give their marriage one last shot. Wife, Isn't that something? Wife of the Year award right there. Dude, she's the coolest <laughs> chick on earth. Well, pretty easy i guess when you don't have one little fight back <laughs> <laughs> would you say you want to drink water <laughs> ring your bell Ding. so so if i'm married to chloe i can cruise out to vegas right to my vacation home my getaway home uh go over the hump for for a little hump you know for a little, yeah. and it's all good i can stay a weekend below seventy five thousand of our family's money Bang two hookers all weekend long, do as much drugs as I could possibly take until I almost die. And she takes me back. Well, they technically weren't even really together before that. I mean, they've been separated for quite a while. Right. So why now? Are they back together? You guys don't because think the fifty-five? You don't think the fifty-five million has anything yeah. to do with this? <laughs> Come on, yeah. there, right you know now. what? Your fifty-five million makes me love you. Yeah, I love you, Lamar. I'm, I'm thinking of having second thoughts about getting rid of you. And uh, if things don't go right with this, and, and if I lose you, I'll be so devastated. And I'm gonna take that 55 million and go to Costa Rica for some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't Lamar go to Costa Rica? He could have bought the whole island of hookers for 50 for 75k. Exactly, you know I mean? dude. 
I don't get that he whole thing. He goes to Pahrump. Oh, and dude, the government down there in Costa Rica, man, they don't give it. Uh, he's whatever he wants. Well, to do. as long as you're not messing with anybody under the age of 18. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Down there, I mean, prostitution's legal. Oh, okay, gotcha there. See, so he's not even doing something legal, but he wasn't doing something he wasn't in Nye doing County. Either. Illegal no. here, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Nye County, where Pahrump is in Crystal, Nevada, is located. Uh, prostitution is legal enterprise. Uh, obviously, in Clark County, it is not. So that's a you know, it's a pretty great story. I just can't believe they're staying together, man. I'm just blown away. Speaking Are you of really Chloe, blown away? I mean, 55 dude, for real? <laughs> so dude, he just banged hookers all weekend, bro. First off, why were they exchanged to begin with? I mean, fifty-five million. I don't care what you do. Like, go bang the whole Dallas Cowboys shield. You're saying I don't give a shit. I mean, <laughs> fifty-five million. I'm cool. I'll sit here. I'll play my Xbox. We'll be all right. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like she wasn't out banging people herself. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Speaking of Chloe, I heard that she's actually going to be Chewbacca in the new Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at there. Isn't that something? You always hear things. And by the way, instead of you guys stealing our goddamn video file, you know, the Kardashians and stuff, you should be thanking Matt and I and, 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 uh, and the American mind grind in general for saving your goddamn marriage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, because of us, you guys are going to stay together. I mean, we, that's the thing. We, open, we have an open uh, forum, you know what I mean? And we, we come clean. You know, here's like, kind of like going to church, you know what I mean? We come clean. We You're just, forgiven. We share. Yeah. You forgive. You, you know what happened, right? She heard your show last week. No show. Her, heard that, you know, Lamar died. She got really upset about everything. Right. Had second thoughts about everything. And then she realized he was still alive. She's like, oh, okay. awesome. Right. Back to 55 million. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 55 million. Plus still, 55 still million. How still disappointed there. do you think she found out when she found out he pulled through? Like, <laughs> she she probably <laughs> was. Damn it. Hey, they're still legally married. I don't know if she, he, she would get like next to Ken and maybe get the whole kit and caboodle. Well, didn't you know she I mean? have medical decisions over him? Yes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Being that, I mean, they are still legally married even though mm-hmm. they filed for divorce and everything. We, I mean, the paperwork, nothing's been, there's never been a judgment. Yeah, the, the so. timing of our show last week was just one day after this all happened. So we didn't even know that she was still legally married to him. So that was like an update on Thursday. You know what I mean? And then it went through the weekend. Then you found out all these details and what, what had really gone on there. And then it was just, it's been a, a great story. And, and I'm happy he's still alive, man. Because from what I read, when we do our research and stuff like that, he's a super likable guy. He's a great friend and all that stuff. He's just really misguided these days. And, you know, he's kind of got this thing going, wanting to be dead. And hopefully... Uh, some therapy and maybe some positive reinforcement will keep well, him from more than likely if he's going to end up in a hospital bed for the rest of his life he's not going to have the, the well, opportunity to get out there again and the good news is bro is that he's breathing on his own and you know he's showing signs you know of walking? recovery it's you, going to take months you, you know can i'm take sure 10 million out of that 55 and make some bionic legs or some shit though you know what I mean? <laughs> well, cruising I think, around a little scooter dude well nba's out you know what i mean in. let's just face it the nba's gone that's uh, not going to happen for a little okay anymore. does he still got feeling in his pecker i don't uh, <laughs> because if <laughs> not i mean <laughs> might as well pull the plug <laughs> That's what they have that. That's what they have that herbal Viagra for. (laughs) Uh, So he didn't have feeling to begin with. (laughs) Okay, let's get into uh, our next story. He'll be back, man. America loves a comeback. (laughs) The best part is they're going to shoot an entire reality TV show on it too. You wait. It's going to be lovely. Lamar's recovery. (laughs) <laughs> I'll tell you guys what. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We got we got a couple great stories coming for you guys. We're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll see you in a couple. Minutes. Welcome Thanks. back. How are you? Uh, here we go. So we're going to go into a couple stories that are actually kind of related. It's about people with a ton of money who are just spoiled rotten and that they can buy themselves as stupid things that they do. In- insane things. Uh, very, very insane things. Things. So we're going to start with the Prince of Saudi Arabia. Matt, you want to fill us in on this? So basically the Prince of Saudi Arabia was accused of raping four women. Uh, the prosecutor threw it out for insufficient evidence. Uh, he's 28 years old. Uh, all of the women have filed a civil court case. Um, my big thing with the whole thing is that there was no grand jury from the prosecution. It's really not your place to decide whether you have enough evidence to file charges or not. It should have went to the grand jury. But he did some sick stuff, man. He uh, Apparently he urinated on all three of these women while standing in the air yelling, I want to pee-pee. I, I want, want to pee-pee. I want to pee-pee. He said that, actually, when I was reading that. I was like, you got to be kidding me. This guy is like, I want to pee-pee. I want to pee-pee. Yeah. And he's peeing on his... Uh, now, these people work for him. Yeah, they were like his house cleaning staff and stuff like that. One was a maid. Did this is so, a prince correct. of a country. He's a prince of Saudi Arabia. The, the prosecution also claims that he didn't get off on diplomatic immunity, which is probably not not the case really so so then it's just the money correct just the money just the oil money i guess just to give you guys some background apparently this guy 
is living in a, a $35 million compound in Beverly Hills. So people don't really say no to people like that. You know what I mean? So he said something along the lines like, if you girls don't, you know, let me do what I want to do to you, I'm just going to go ahead and kill you, have you killed. Right. Basically, he said, I'm a prince. I can do whatever I want. You're common folk. Yeah, that's right. Basically, you're nothing. Like you're you nothing. Are, I'm, yeah. I'm royalty and you're nothing. So tell us a little bit more about some it of the It gets better. It gets better. So after he pees on them, right, he actually makes all three of them witness another man give him a handy. So he's getting a little palm job while uh, while these three are watching. He forces them to watch, which uh, homosexuality is actually illegal in Saudi Arabia, which is interesting. It can be. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, it's not only against the law, but what do they do to you? Uh, you can be flogged or, or actually hung. <laughs> you can be executed so for <laughs> homosexuality. Well, how is he going to straighten that out with the people back home? I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I, I don't know if he's going back home, man. So let me get this straight. He is he, he he's raping girls, he's peeing on girls, which I guess is a thing these days. You know, these kids these days, god damn it, they're into some weird shit, man. I just like regular sex, man. I don't need all that <laughs> theatrics and stuff like that. I don't need like I don't need none of that doggy style. Sensational weird shit, you know what I mean? Like I don't get that, man. I just like traditional sex. It's always kinda of blown my mind. You know, I still haven't figured out how it makes it all feel so right. right. So no golden showers for Eric. No, I'm off the golden showers and the pooping on people and all that crap. <laughs> You know, like a couple weeks ago, getting high on sniffing and snorting shit and, you know, shit, like defecate. Have you tried yeah. that before? Well, have you? <laughs> I used to be a plumber. Yeah, of course I've smelled shit before. I mean, Does it get you high? Uh, sometimes it smelled like money to me back then. So. <laughs> <laughs> you really got to broaden your today. horizons, Eric. I'm smelling your shit and your bills going up, mm -hmm. like, constantly. This gets in my face. This so, bill so, so getting back to the story, he's most, getting hand jobs from dudes. From uh, from a dude while all three of them watch. But the most peculiar one was that he actually had a dude bend over in front of his face and just rip ass. and uh, Directly in directly his Directly on his order and made these women watch. That's so, hot. Do he, does he get aroused through such an activity? I, apparently he gets aroused by male hand jobs. I don't know. Well, this guy's a nutcase, well, man. Uh, well, male, male hand job, you know, uh, Dutch rudders are common <laughs> these days, I, I guess. When, when, you know, if you're a good buddy of somebody, you give him the old. <laughs> Dutch rudder and help him out, but uh, the thing I'm not quite understanding is, uh, it was it an arousing thing, or if it's just something that he likes to be degraded or something? They, like they said it was a, in a sexual nature. Okay. Um, I wasn't there. His father's got <laughs> 24. Does his he father, get pink eye a lot? I would think so, right? Like he, does he wear like goggles or something first? I, I think he's got the, the chic turban there thing, right? He pulled it down. Is over it, the his eyes. father worth over 20 billion? 20.4 billion. Yes. 20.4 billion dollars. Daddy's worth 24, 20 billion dollars? Yeah. Oh, dude, he's got a lot of money. That's yeah. a lot of money. You know how much that is, guys, right? 20 billion dollars is 20,000 millions. Let's put that in perspective. Most of us, most of us regular working folk, we just want a million bucks, two million bucks. Oh, I'll put it in, you know, mutual funds or community funds or whatever and get my 4% and live all right, you know? This guy's got $20,000 million, folks. He makes Lamar, Lamar look broke, man. Yeah, Chloe's, oh, yeah, Lamar's Chloe's nothing, As soon dude. as he drops off, Chloe's, Chloe's going it. She's there. going to be pee peed on. For sure. So <laughs> you can pee on my face. <laughs> well, not hey, that's Chloe's next husband. Yeah, she, <laughs> she'll man. be the dude. Well, dude, she's the most understanding <laughs> chick. You know, the shitting in the face and whatnot. He's, she's cool with it, dude. Apparently. She'll, she'll, she'll take him back. The rapings and stuff like that, it's all good. He paid $300,000 cash just to get out of jail. Three hundred grand. Wow, the bail is three million dollars. Like right apparently, yeah, yeah, because yeah, usually ten percent, right? Ten percent. Jesus. So it could have been a cash. cash get out thing, of jail. Call Goodfellas bail bonds. I guess you know <laughs> downtown. You get a free shirt. I heard. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no shit, man. You get a free shirt, man. Working with them is nice. That that must be. I wouldn't know. I'm yeah, a pen guy. You gotta check in twice a week though. Oh, you do? Is it two times a week? I don't know. Yeah, their yeah. policy is. Not that you'd know either. No. Oh, of course not. Not personally. <laughs> what a great story But that basically, is, right? no no charges filed, right? So that's that's like the So everything's thing. cool. Everything's well. They're going to get some money in civil court. You know, they're going to well, get a chunk of change. Well, per usual, a civil court is always a way to get right. Wow, man. That's unbelievable. His to brother actually beat, beat another guy to death. He like sexually tortured him in London and beat him to death. And now he's sitting in a Saudi prison. Because so they, they actually did a prisoner exchange with London. Another prince is gay that comes His from brother. a country that's illegal to be gay. You could be put to death if you're gay. And both of them, brothers, are gay. Yeah. Yeah, the folks back well, home. Well, I don't know. This guy, this guy peed on chicks, so I guess he's bi, if, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he's try just anything. Just to be politically yeah. correct. <laughs> just about. He's trisexual. Try anything. He took farts right to the face, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 
that's not He's fun. I don't see what's fun about that. I mean, you know, who am I to say? I'm just um, saying, twenty billion dollars. Can't you find a better thing to do than get farted in your own face? You know what I mean? You think? I, you know, maybe start a philanthropy. You know, and hook up some with Lamar, man. Go to the whorehouse. Yeah, well, you know. Wow, I'm speechless on that. And then we're <laughs> we've got a story about another privileged person. Speaking and of rich little bastards. <laughs> yep. Speaking of rich little bastards, uh, this one's more serious. This one's there was catastrophic uh, results of this story and we want to bring it to you because uh, we want people to be uh, aware of some of the judicial um, injustices that are going on in our country and I think it's a really great example of that so Ethan Couch for those of you who don't know Ethan Couch he is 16 years old he is from Burleson, Texas. Is that correct, Chase? That is correct. Go ahead, fill us in, man, what, what you know about it and we'll go from there. Well, he's a 16 year old teen uh, he ended up Killing four people, he's going to get 10 years probation. Is that pretty much the deal there? I mean, overall, his family's, uh, you know, very wealthy. He's a privileged teen. Um, he, there's been a lot of people injured in his accident. He's got a little bit of a history before this incident. Um, you know, the, so the incident, let's, let's give some background to this. Uh, you've got... Put yourself there, okay? You're in Burleson, Texas. It's a, sm it's a small town outside of Fort Worth, Texas, okay? It's June 15th of 2013, okay? One day before Father's Day. And a lady pulls up on a very beautiful home, and she's across the street from this beautiful home, and she has, gets a flat tire. So this all starts with a flat tire. Simple stuff in a, in a local neighborhood. Speed zone there is 40 miles an hour. Uh, the owner of the house that she was directly across from is owned by Eric Boyles, and he, his wife Holly, and his daughter Shelby live in that beautiful home. And uh, they had a beautiful family, and they loved each other and all that stuff. So Holly and Shelby go out to investigate what's going on. There's a strange car out front. They want to go see what's going down. So they got a flat tire. They're nice enough people that, you know, they offer hospitality. They say, we'll stay with you out here and wait for uh, AAA or whoever's going to come to give you some assistance. Then another guy pulls up, a pastor. Yes, a youth up. pastor. Uh, he sees him on the side of the road. He decides to pull up, and he's got a small child in his vehicle as well. Yeah, his kid at the time, I think, was about eight, nine years old. Uh, his name was Brian Jennings. Uh, Brian Jennings was at a, a philanthropy event three miles from the uh, Boyle's home, and they were actually going back to return some of the chairs that they had borrowed for the event to wherever they got it. I don't know if they rented it or if they you know, had to bring it back if they borrowed it or whatever. And then uh, the third vehicle involved with this was Lucas McConnell's vehicle. Uh, Lucas McConnell pulled up on the scene uh, with a small... Oh, no, that was Brian Jennings. I'm sorry. I, I got to correct myself. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, and what happened was now we have to give some background about Ethan Couch. So Ethan, three months prior to this event, got a Dewey. He got a, a, a driving. He got a, he got a ticket for minor consumption. Yeah. He was found in a pickup truck with a naked, passed out fourteen-year-old girl with a one point seven five of Grey Goose. Wow! Yeah, he's ready to party. Was there marijuana involved? I, I, I heard, heard maybe there were some substances involved or no? Or Valium or whatever. Valium, but yeah. when he he did get a ticket for minor consumption on that. <clears throat> yeah, the three months prior to this incident. So three months prior, he's involved with drinking and driving in some capacity right regardless if he got formal charges so now you establish a history right mm -hmm. this kid's a bad kid you know he's a bad he's he's entitled his dad's got a, a business a sheet metal business that does 15 million dollars in sales a year he's entitled he feels uh, he has no he has no responsibility he's just a bad bad seed okay so three months later now he just gets filmed the day of the uh, the day of this incident, he gets filmed with a bunch of his friends stealing, stealing. beer mm -hmm. out of a Walmart. Okay, gotcha. Where was the Home Depot lady? She had unloaded yeah. her nine. She, I don't know. <laughs> this could have all been avoided. None of this would have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this thing would have been handled right at the spot. So <laughs> well, she, you're getting away with that goddamn <laughs> well, beer. Or I'll kill you all, you sons of bitches. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, her, her penalties would have been a lot worse uh, under the circumstances of coming from such a wealthy family. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, you know, he, he's basically. Let free in some aspect. Jesus. I mean, so they leave the Walmart, bro. He's in his dad's F-350. That's a tonner. Am I right, well, I Chase? Think, I thought yeah, it was a 150. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's a 350. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in a one-ton truck. That's a red 350. No question about it. So that's a one-ton truck. Absolutely. As big as they get and as tough as they get. Ford's, Ford tough, you know what I mean? He's going 70 miles an hour in a 40. This is a country road. 
Uh, keep in mind, don't forget the four people are across the street from the Boyle's house, and they're just hanging out waiting for emergency service to get the car up and running. Wait, well, he's got a bunch of kids in his vehicle. He's got him. five in the in the vehicle with him, so six, six, six total in, him. and two in the in the tail. In the, you know, in the bed, in the bed of the truck, he's going seventy miles an hour. He's playing chicken with the other pa- with the other motorists, and he loses control of the vehicle. Imagine that, you know, it's just a dumb thing. He veers off the road, and just the timing of it was just perfect for this horrible, horrible accident. He crashes into the small truck that hits the disabled vehicle, and the third thing he hit was the poor souls. The four poor souls kills them on impact, throws them hundreds of feet. Uh, dead, dead. I mean, just a it's just a murder scene. They're everywhere. all dead. Uh, two people in the in the bed of his truck end up injuring. One one of his buddies that was in the rear of the truck, uh, you know, he can't talk or walk anymore. I heard he can only sip through a straw, and he can blink his eyes to communicate with other people. I think probably he's sixteen years old. I think he got like probably a two million dollar settlement that's probably not justifiable for the condition that he's yeah, left in. Yeah, yeah, daddy daddy paid the two million dollars to Sergio Molina, who is sixteen years old, who can only smile, blink, and sip through a straw. Um, let's go back a little bit. Now, at the time of the incident, he's taken away. There's chairs and debris everywhere, and this is a this is a scene that has to be inventoried and it's a crime scene and it's just insane. And uh, going backwards, uh, his blood alcohol content three, three hours, hours later, three hours after this t- catastrophic event was 0.24 blood alcohol content in the state of Texas. Uh, if you're legally drunk at 0.08, in addition, if you are under the age of 18 or 21, uh, they have no tolerance for any blood alcohol in your system. If you're under the age of 21, which is legal drinking age in Texas. So essentially, he was three times over the legal limit for a person 21 and older. He was 24 times uh, more uh, intoxicated <coughs> from a person that's 21 or under. In addition, they found Valium in his system, and there was a third substance, and it was marijuana. I'm yeah, pretty sure marijuana. of it. Yeah. So yeah. marijuana, Valium, and a .24 blood alcohol content. And so, he gets off with 10 years probation because he was rich. He, well, he, he was a victim of, of fluenza, yeah, which yeah. is a product of wealthy, privileged parents who never set limits for him. Exactly. So he, a daddy gets involved. Daddy's got a laundry list of problems with the law. Mom's got a laundry list in, in regards to the law. In fact, between the two of them, they've had 20 charges filed against his parents, not him, his parents, who have, who've done a wonderful job modeling for him. And uh, they have been officially nominated for the worst parents on planet Earth. And they probably will take the prize. They will get a trophy for it. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So he got off because he was rich and his parents never disciplined him whatsoever. Yeah, basically, is, that's, is, the, that's the concept behind this. That's the, the judge sided with him, with his lawyer, on being that he never knew the consequences of, for his actions. And basically, they tried to blame his parents should be partially responsible for the fact that they never set limits for him. He was pretty much allowed to have and do anything that he wanted to do. His folks were not living in the house. They had already moved into their new home. They had upgraded their home. He was actually 16 years old, un- unsupervised, having a big-ass party at his house with beer that they had stolen from Walmart. You, I mean, it's just a nightmare. And the negligence on these people's parts is just criminal. And obviously, they don't even file charges against them whatsoever, I don't think, right? The parents? This might sound a little cold-hearted, but nothing is going to teach you accountability and, and discipline like a good person. Prison raping. He should be behind bars. <laughs> I mean, like, really? No. Well, well, guys. Here's the deal. So, Daddy gets involved, and Daddy's going to make everything right, as he's always done for his little precious little Ethan. And he hires a fancy lawyer, and they do this affluenza defense. And miraculously, and I really just don't get it, man. What's the protocol for killing four goddamn people in a manslaughter, a vehicle manslaughter? You know, what's the penalty for that? Let alone all the other people that were injured during the accident. Well, check this out, bro. The judge sided, sided with the with the defense. And he said, you know what? I get it. He's 16 years old, and I I want him to go to rehabilitation. Daddy ponies up a half million dollars, $500,000, to put him in, like, fucking club med of rehabilitation. In, like, Newport. Yeah, Newport Beach or Malibu on the beach. They're they're saying that they're not going to release him to his parents. They're going to find a treatment facility for him and leave him there for anywhere from one to two years. Right. 
without any contact of his parents to basically try to teach him a lesson, and he's going to be on probation for 10 years. I could see it now. Okay, little Ethan, we're going to have filet mignon tonight. Now, how do you take that? You know I mean? Are we going to do like a medium and medium well? How do you like your steak? And I'll tell you what, since we don't want you quick cold turkey, we're going to give you a 12-pack. You can sit on the beach, hang out, you know, maybe smoke some weed or something like that, take some Valium or some painkillers <laughs> or some shit like that, you know? We're going to take good care of him, you know, and get him back up and running. So anyway, the, the point of the story, guys, is because we are running out of time, but listen what is your opinion what is your opinion what would be the proper penalty for something like this um many think that he should go to juvenile prison and be transferred to an adult prison and do some hard time maybe 10 years maybe 20 years uh will he come out of this rehabilitation with no remorse because he's a little self-centered little narcissist Prick. bastard <laughs> and maybe come out of prison and be like you know so i offed a couple people daddy made it right maybe i'll do it again i don't know you know and it's just food for thought and it's something to really consider and think about and uh and and this goes on all over the place jurisdictions change state to state changes penalties change and let's face it a lot of the stories we've done in the last 10 weeks man it all comes down to a very simple thing money money cures a lot of problems for rich people and I don't think they should get away with it. And I don't think that he should have been able to just walk away with probation. Uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I appreciate everything that everyone's ever done. Please continue sharing your stories. Communicate with us through Facebook. Our YouTube uh, show will be up probably tomorrow for view. Check out last week's episode. I know it's kind of a weird watch, but we would really appreciate you enjoying it. Uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another show. As we adjourn here tonight, we will leave you with this beautiful song to help calm your nerves. As you fall asleep, think of all you have heard here tonight on our program. Try to relax and let all thoughts become one. Remember, your brain is a muscle. You must exercise it. Practice logical thinking. And for God's sakes, be kind to each other. Good night. And thank you for listening to the American Mind Grind. Have a good night, guys. With cosmic love, here is Matthew Schuler. From your heights and landed in my eyes. I screamed aloud as it saw through them, and now it's left me blind.